Good evening, class. My name is Clinton Ellison III, and tonight we're going to be discussing the Microsoft case study. Uh, so let's get started with the video from their website. Look around. Technology is all around us. We use it in every aspect of our lives. It enables us to do amazing things. But what if we could go further? What if we could go beyond the screen? Where your digital world is blended with your real world. Now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your end? I just put the images in one drive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. Now what? And tighten here and here. New ways to collaborate and explore the places we've never been. Look at this formation. Let's take a closer look. And new ways to create the things we imagine. Because when you change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. So I chose the video because it is a prime example of both how, one, how Microsoft has drastically expanded on their product portfolio since they've been around, and two, how they are an industry leader in newer trends and technologies. Um, as you can see, uh, their, their HoloLens um, encompasses uh, what they call augmented reality. I don't know if, how many of you all are familiar with uh, Pokemon Go, but this is that plus with the sophisticated hardware and um, open platform design uh, capabilities to go with it. Now, I realize we're talking to a marketing class this evening, but I did start off as a finance nerd, so it's only right to check out their stock price. Here you'll see that they're trading at $56.53 per share. A look at their board of directors, you'll all recognize Bill Gates. He's a founder and technology advisor, along with a few other fine folks. Here's a quick view of their leadership team. The two gentlemen on the top right are the marketing executives, um, along with their CEO on the left. He's an interesting character. Uh, go read about him. There's a couple of good stories and uh, good business articles about him if, you, if you're not familiar. Now, to briefly summarize what I feel is the most important aspect of this case study is the open-ended agreement, the, excuse me, the open-ended agreement that Microsoft had with IBM upon IBM's launch of one of the first computer platforms in 1980. Um, IBM went to Microsoft to design the operating system, um, and the agreement on paper, which is a lot of controversy and mixed stories around, is that uh, Microsoft, in turn, had an agreement in that document that allowed them to sell their version um, of the operating system and market their version, MS-DOS, to other hardware makers, knowing that um, IBM's platform, is, from a hardware perspective, was uh, could be duplicated in the future, which later on proved to, in a sense, be true. So Microsoft had the wherewithal to realize that fact long before IBM did, and in a sense, changed the industry and enabled Microsoft to become the industry standard in the PC market for operating systems. Now, MS-DOS, of course, as we all know, eventually evolved into the various platforms of Windows, which we're all familiar with today. And uh, in the late 80s and the early 90s, and heck, even in the early 2000s, they had a stranglehold on the operating system industry. Of course, you're going to have some competition like the Google Chrome OS, which is fairly new, Android, and of course, Mac OS. So from this one example of a partnership, we can see how effective marketing and opportunistic practices and, heck, even legalities can go in, uh, in, when it comes to shaping companies and even industries. IBM doesn't even play in the hardware business anymore. Uh, they sold their 
uh, PC and printing businesses off to Lenovo and Lexmark, respectively, and they strictly focus on um, automation and software these days. Microsoft, on the other hand, has gone to expand into and even launch a couple of product categories. Here you'll see Dynamics, which is sort of like Salesforce. You got your Azure, Windows Server. Those are all cloud-based operating systems and applications. Here's your Office software, so like your Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, those have all become industry standard for any administrative professional. They even have versions of them on Mac operating systems. You have professional, commercial, and consumer hardware with your failed Zoom, um, your Xbox, uh, your Microsoft Surface tablets, um, things like that have, have proven uh, to be successful uh, product categories for Microsoft as well. Here's a quick little montage of various products and brands that, uh, key brands, some of them, right, uh, Windows specifically, uh, that Microsoft has launched through the years, uh, just to give you a good idea of, of their diverse portfolio here. Um, and in conclusion, the Microsoft brand is often used as an endorser, and there is distance between Microsoft and their sub-brands. The distance has served Microsoft well. For instance, Microsoft has been publicly portrayed as a bully by competition and attacked by government for antitrust violations. But because of Microsoft's portfolio management, they have been able to minimize negative feelings towards their sub-brands. If this sounds familiar, it's basically a summary for a last paragraph in one of Heath's blogs that I found from 2007. So go check it out. A lot of good information, actually. Uh, so that was very interesting to find. Uh, here's my references, and good evening.